as I said, I was going to tell you about pearls. So yeah, like I said, the most common sort of pearl bead that you'll get are these ones just here, standard glass pearls, where essentially it's a glass bead underneath, and then they sort of paint, paint it onto the surface, uh, on the top there of the bead so that you've got this sort of coating. You can have it in lots and lots of different colors. That's a glass pearl. Now there's there's glass pearls and there's glass pearls. So these ones here are glass pearls made by Preciosa, Preciosa Ornella. So essentially the difference is the coating, the quality of the coating that they put on the top. The ones like this one, uh, it's just a standard sort of paint coating. It sticks very well, uh, but these ones look a little bit more towards what an actual pearl is. So this is what a Preciosa glass pearl would look like, and this is what a standard glass pearl looks like. So you can see, hopefully, uh, just here, this one, it's a little bit shinier. This one's a bit more natural, satiny looking. So those are your two different styles of glass pearl. Uh, these ones here, shell beads. So obviously they're made from shell. Uh, they're actually these tiny little white uh, shells that they have. I've seen the, the factory where they have mounds and mounds of them and they uh, crush them down into these super cute little beads so that they can shape them, make them exactly round and so forth. Um, that's what these are. These are all on sale as well. Um, then you've got your mother of pearl beads, which it's the same material. Actually, I'll talk about fresh water first because one leads better on to the other. So obviously these are freshwater pearls. If you haven't seen, well, everybody, everybody knows freshwater pearls. They're, you know, the, um, elegant and stylish and that sort of thing and 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 they are your your gorgeous your high quality they're natural they grow so inside of the muscle uh over time these ones fresh in fresh water are grown so rather than being manufactured they grow from nacre where the muscle slowly deposits more and more nacre over the top and of course obviously depending on the the quality of them is the the price of uh that they, they, they cost more or less so obviously the <clears throat> the better the luster, the more the, the higher the quality the bead, the the more round the shape, the more uniform the shape, again, the higher the quality is. Uh, so and then again the the color and the surface, how many little nicks and so forth there are, uh, they can be <clears throat> Uh, they, they all are factors in the quality of a freshwater pearl. But like I said, they're made from nacre, which is a natural material, and they're grown over time. Now, when in the freshwater pearl making process, they end up with all of these mussels left over, instead of just discarding them and throwing them away, what they do is they bevel them out into this the, the actual same nacre material. They bevel them out into these perfectly round little beads. So you get a very similar luster, admittedly not quite as good as your freshwater pearl lusters, but very, very nice. Um, they're a gorgeous quality of bead. Uh, instead of like your glass ones where they're painted on the outside, these one, because it's that nacre, they can sort of put the color into the actual bead itself rather than sort of just on the outside. So again, it's a gorgeous color. They come in lots and lots of different colors. All of those are on sale, but essentially, I'm going to be using the mother of pearl beads today in my tutorial where I show you how to make the, the V-shaped necklace. Um, let's, let's see uh, who's joined us so far. I know we were a little late behind uh, because of those little YouTube issues. For some reason, YouTube didn't want to start. It just happens sometimes. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, we've got Deb here. Alicia was nice and early. Uh, actually, do you know what? While, I've, while I do this, I'm going to put some of the demo pieces on the table for you to admire. See, look, here it is. This is essentially what I'm going to teach you in its bracelet form. Uh, there's also the necklace version. Here's a dark blue one. Uh, wait, let's pop Alicia's little hello to everyone out the way. Uh, where is that other necklace? Here we go. There's quite a few. There's... Lots of different ones uh, that we can look at. And then, of course, this one here, which is another kit. Again, very, very similar uh, technique, but with a, a completely different look, is this one here, which is our Cinderella. So all three of these you can get from our website. Uh, they're, they're, they're 
all waiting, ready. If you click the link in the description, you can see them. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to sort of fuse all three of these together to, to show you lots and lots of different things. But I'll talk more about these. Uh, Monica is here. Karen is here from Trinidad and Tobago. Lovely to see you, Karen. Thanks for joining us. Um, we've got Angelica, we've got Kathy. Wayne's made it nice and early. G glad to see you're here, Wayne, uh, as usual. Jackie's over on Facebook as well. Um, we've got Purple Penny. We've got Angelica as well. We've got Heather, who is in cloudy, warm and wet Georgia. Uh, welcome. I haven't seen your name before, uh, but uh, thank you for joining. We've got Alison as well. Kay is here. Bindi's here. Um, Joan as well. We've got Mary as lots and lots and lots of different people joining us. That reminds me, uh, today, make sure you stick around because at the end, we've been running a competition in our Facebook group, uh, which was a Midsummer Night's Dream. So if I just pop that up on the screen... There we go. Uh, yeah, our Midsummer Night's Dream competition has now closed. We've got our winners. We've worked it all out. And we're going to um, announce the winners at the end of today's stream. So uh, make sure you stick around for that one because that's going to be uh, a nice bit of fun. Uh, you can see all the different entries. Uh, I see Tracy's just joined us from Arizona. Tracy entered the competition, for example. So make sure you stick around uh, so that we can see everybody's entries and find out who the winners were as well. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's just, let's begin, shall we? Um, hopefully, hopefully, we can, I'll show you the basics. So if I just pop these out of the way, I'll hold one up for you. This is sort of the basic design here uh, of that V-shaped necklace. And if I flip it over on the back, you can see this is our base structure. So this one here is made with some of those uh, mother of pearl beads. Um, the, the really, really gorgeous sort of uh, ones made from the same material as a freshwater pearl, but manufactured. Uh, these ones I'm using 6 mil to make my base structure. I've got my standard seed beads, which are size 11. Uh, sorry, size 10 Preciosa seed beads. And then, of course, I'm going to do this um, sort of pattern along the top there. So uh, all of these things can be done with whatever beads you like. You can do them with your standard glass pearls. The one I showed you just before was with... Um, the, the shell pearls. This one here, for example, has been done with uh, fresh water. So you can see they're just a little bit irregularly shaped, but it still works just great for this design. And you can sort of play with your beads on the top and come up with your own sort of color designs and so forth. Um, that's sort of the main gist of what we're doing. Of course, like I said, I am going to show you how to... You can see I've got lots of colors here. This one is uh, the the grey elegance necklace just here there. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make this super nice V shape at the bottom and then I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of doing the top. So this is sort of your your basic just sort of zigzagging cross over the top um, or if you prefer it like our uh, our Cinderella one um, I should show you it in two different versions. Here they are. Uh, you can embellish the edges as well if you want to and you can also have crystals on the top so it's ultra sparkly so see how that black one you can see i've got uh black crystals on the top see how much they sparkle you almost can't even see them because they're on top of those black glass pearls but you can definitely see how much they're sparkling so anyway i'm going to cover all of those things in the one video so it's going to be a lot of tuition today that we've got going uh but the difference though i'm going to be using some of those, like I said, these shell beads just here. Someone asked me about my hand because I know YouTube wasn't working properly. Uh, so I was playing basketball last night and somebody whacked my hand and it hurt a lot. So maybe I'll have to get an x-ray later. We'll see. But it feels okay and I'm sure it will be fine for doing a bit of beading. So anyway, uh, I'm kind of going to just play around really and see what I come up with, see what happens, see what looks good, see what's... You know, see what's nice, those sorts of things. I'm going to be using these two colors just here. So I've got like a really sort of soft pinky tone and then a slightly darker blush. So they're very similar in color tone. Um, 
Lily says the black one. Oh my god. Well, like I said, if you want to just click the little link in the description down there. Uh, if you're on YouTube, it's down below. If you're on Facebook, it's up above. Uh, it'll take you to where you can see all three different kits. So the necklace and the two different styles of bracelet. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to use these two beads here. I've got myself some seed beads. I've got myself the rose gold colour just here because I thought it would go nicely. And then I've got myself a nice creamy coloured crystal. Again, you can change the size of your crystal if you want. Um, but yeah, the the uh, the crystal, you can have a smaller one, you can have a larger, you can use a bicone. It doesn't really matter because we're just going to be using it on the top of our design. See it just there in the centre uh, as, as a little focal piece like that. So it doesn't matter too much. Uh, what it looks like. Uh, Susan says, how were the Lamingtons? They were great. So in, if, you, if you're wondering what we're talking about, uh, it was my birthday last weekend and um, my girlfriend Maxine made me some Lamingtons, which if you've never heard of them, it's an Australian cake because I'm Australian. Uh, it's an Australian cake and they're super yum and hers were great. In fact, I've already ordered more, so she's made more for me, uh, which when I get home later today, they'll be there waiting for me already. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if she's on here watching or at least drops in at some point. So I'll keep an eye out for her and, and, uh, and I'll introduce her as it were. Uh, the 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 Lamington expert first time uh, first time making them and they were great so anyway I'm gonna grab myself out some beads and like I said I'm gonna fuse all three of those designs together uh, and make myself one little piece here so I'll show you the basic technique for doing the central section. You can do it with one needle or you can do it with two. It's up to you how you prefer, but I'm gonna do it with two needles. It's essentially just right angle weave that we're doing. So I've got myself two needles attached to the very same thread uh, just here. See that, there's my thread just there. And I'm gonna use this to create my base. So the base structure is, if I show you on this one here, this section at the back. Now, you can use seed beads in this. You don't have to. You can do it without seed beads. You can do it with seed beads. You can do it with size 15, size 11, size 10, size 8, whatever size you want to do. Uh, you, 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 can, you can do it with whatever size beads. So it works out just fine. So I'll grab myself some of these little pearl beads. The main color... So I'll show you a few different things that you can do. So if I grab myself a few of my satiny looking mother of pearl beads, like I said, because we're doing right angle weave, basically what that is, is creating little boxes of beads. So if we have a look at this one here, for example, one right angle weave is one group of four beads. So see how we've got a little box there? We have one, We've got one on the left side, one on the right side, and we cross through that one in between. Then we have one on the left, one on the right, and we cross through these ones. Then one on the left, one on the right, and cross. One left, right, cross. Left, right, cross. All the way. Repeat, 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 repeat. Like I said, you can do it with or without the seed beads. I will show you um, with seed beads, though, just because... I want to. I think it looks nice, and I like it, and I think it's fun. So essentially, what I'm going to start with... I've got one pearl, one seed bead, and then I'm going to just continue adding those until I've got four pearls and four seed beads. So one, two, three. I can do it just on with the one uh, thread just there for now uh, because, wait a second, there we go. Uh, because I'm going to bring it to the middle of my work here. So it doesn't matter too much if you just pick them all up with one hand. That works just fine. So once I've got my beads threaded on, like I do just here, I'm going to slide this all the way down to the middle of my thread. So see that? There it is in the center. And now essentially what I'm going to do is take one thread so that they're crossing through this one bead just here. So you can see one thread's already going through it. So this thread over here needs to now go through this bead here. So if I pull them apart, whoops, there we go. 
bring them all down into the center and I'm gonna cross through these beads here. So I'll just take this needle, this one's got the seed bead on the end, so I'll just ignore this needle and I'm gonna go through this one here and I'll pull it nice and tight, not all the way yet, because I wanna make sure I get it to the center of my thread. So I'll hold my two needles together and then between the beads, I'm gonna just slide it all the way down until I've got that nice little right angle weave shape there. Now, if you want to, again, you don't have to do this, but um, if you want to, you can go round all of the beads once more to get them extra secure. So I'll do that with just one of the two threads here. And I find if you've got two threads, it's always easier if you keep one over on the left and one over on the right so that they don't get caught around each other. So I'll show you what I mean. Here we go. So you can see I've got one thread going off to the left. I'm going to just keep that one out the way and over to the left. And I'm going to keep the other one out the way and around to the right. So I'll just use the one thread here and keeping it nice and firm as I do it, I'm gonna thread through all of the beads once more just to sort of secure it in place, that very first right angle weave, so it's nice and firm. So just all the way until I'm back to where I began. So I'll just zoom in a teeny touch so you can see what I'm doing. All the way through there. And then around through the next few beads as well. Oops, there we are, there we are in the center. I'll swip, uh, I, I remember someone reminded me that I used to flick between the left and the right hand views all the time, me being a left hander, obviously. So I'll, I'll try and remember to do that plenty of times during this video. So yeah, I'll just pop that one thread out over there. This one's over here, and there you go. I've got that relatively nicely secured now, and you can see by having gone through it, it's much more secure, and I'm ready to attach more beads. So I'm going to continue along doing the two needle method. I will show the one needle method as well, uh, which in fact, I'll do that right now. This is, I'll do a couple of rows of two needle, and then I'll jump in and show you one needle as well. So obviously you can do the base in just one color. So I'll start like that for now. So because we wanna have a seed bead at each vertice, I've got a bead here. So I'll pick up one seed bead and then a pearl, which is gonna be my left thread. There we go. And then I'll pick up one more seed bead just there. I'll pick up exactly the same on the opposite side. So one seed bead, one pearl. I tell you, I didn't get enough pearls off the thread for me. I'll have to grab myself a few more in a second. One seed bead, one pearl, and one seed bead. I'll slide that all the way down as well to the bottom. And now I'm going to thread th both needles in opposite directions to create that little box uh, into a, uh, a right angle weave. So I grab myself a few extra pearls. There we go. And like I said, I'll pick up one pearl on the end of my thread here. Whoops, there it is. There's that last one. I'll thread it all the way down till it's pretty close to the end. So this is the bead I've just added. And then I'll take this one here and I'll pass through that same bead, but in the opposite direction. So through that little hole like that. And now I can pull it all the way tight and you'll see it will lock those beads nicely into position. So if I just pull both threads, there you go. You can see it gives it that nice square little finish. There we are. Look at that. So now you do the same thing again. So I'll pick up one seed bead and one pearl plus a seed bead and finally the pearl which I'm going to cross through, which is this one here, and I'll slide them down. Again, I'll do the same. I'll pick up a seed bead, one pearl, and one seed bead there again as well. 
So slide those down towards, and now because I'm coming out, if you have a look, my thread is coming out of this side of this bead, so I'm gonna enter from that one to get them to cross over one another. So just pop that down, pass back through that exact same hole all the way through it, and pull it tight. And then you see, there you go, you've got that next little box added. So there we are, we uh, have them all there. And now I'll show you how to do the exact same process, but with one needle. So if you're more of a, a one needle person, you prefer using just the one needle, let me show you how you do that. So um, which thread is longer? Oh no, they're the same. How's that happened? Oh well. So anyway, uh, let's just, I'll show you now how you can do it with one needle. And I'll do a few more iterations in two needle and one needle. Uh, so that you can sort of get the gist of how you do it. So if you're going to do it with one needle, you would pick up all of the beads on one needle. So one seed bead, one pearl, one seed bead, a pearl, a seed bead, a pearl, and finally one more seed bead. So three little pearls surrounded by five little seed beads. So see that? Seed bead, pearl, seed bead, pearl, seed bead, pearl, and one extra seed bead. So four, four seed beads and three pearls. So slide that all the way down. And to create it into a box shape, see how we're exiting from this side. Ignore this thread. Pretend this thread's not even there. So what we'll do is loop around and into this little bead here. So the way that we're going to do that is to just loop it round and come to make that square shape into this last little bead so that it goes around and we're coming back out exactly where we started. So see that? I went started here, went all the way around, and I'm coming back out here. So I'll pull it all the way through. And you'll see, there you go, it creates that little square there now. But I need to get back up to the top so that I can continue working. So I'll thread through one half of the beads so that I'm exiting from my pearl at the very, very end here. So um, if I just pull that one there, pop that through here, all the way, pull it nice and tight, and then end up through this last little bead here at the end. And that would bring us in position to do our next little right angle weave. You just pull it nice and tight. And then if I lay it down, you'd see you can now continue working with the one needle if you want to. I personally find that doing it with two needles is that little bit quicker, but it's entirely your preference. Whichever you like better, that's what you would do. So I'll just thread this through so I'm back in position for doing two needle. And I'll do a couple more rows so that I can show you how we can embellish this little fella. So where are we? Through there and into this. This is why you'd want to keep doing one method or the other all the way through just so it doesn't get into a big mess. There we go. Pull that nice and tight. Here we are. See that? Nice and easy, looks good, comes together quite quickly, and looks very effective. See, there we are. Like that? So, um, uh, yeah, so I'll do a few more little iterations. Again, it's up to you whether you do it one needle or two, but I'm going to do it with my two needle method. In fact, uh, I should show you the one needle method once more, but I'll do it with my right hand uh, instead of with my, my left, or make it look like it's my right hand, I should say because I can just flick the camera. Either way, I'm going to do a couple more little rows just so I can show you different ways you can embellish it. And then I'm going to show you how you can do that V shape, that corner on the end. So uh, let's just pick this up here, pass through here as well. What do we think of this technique? Obviously, it's called right angle weave. It's a pretty common one. Uh, who, who hasn't done right angle weave before? Who is this all brand new to? Who's never seen this technique? Um, and who has, obviously? Um, who's a big fan of right angle weave? I know it's a very popular stitch. It's really, really good for this sort of base structure type material. You can make three-dimensional shapes with it. It's one of your standard sort of 
um, stitches that is really useful when it is uh, when it comes to bead weaving. Uh, I've got my cup of tea, of course, with my name on it. So I'm going to have a sip, I think. And then I'll show you how to do the corner in just a minute. So I'll do one more. I'll flick it over to right hand view just quickly. Uh, where is it? Where's right hand view? Here we go. Right hand view. There it is. Um, so I'll do one with one hand, one more, one needle, but this time it looks like, even though you can see there's that same left hand, but uh, now it's on my right. Magic. How did I manage to get my bandage so quickly to the other hand? Uh, I'll show you one needle method, but with uh, the other hand now. So again, we'll pick up one seed bead, make sure I've got enough of these little pearl beads around. Yes, there they all are. Very good. One seed bead and a pearl and a seed bead. Oh, Maxine's here. We were talking about, she said, I, I like the purple mulberry colour. Uh, we were talking about your lamingtons just earlier. So uh, that's, there's Maxine there. So if, you're, if you, if you want to comment a message to Maxine about her <laughs> lamingtons, uh, she might even tell you where she got the recipe from or anything. Uh, but there she is. She's, um, we were talking about you earlier. There we go, through here. So yeah, once you've got your beads on the one needle, so we're, this is the thread that I'm working with. We'll ignore this thread for now because we'll pretend that I, um, I'm, I'm doing it just one needle method. So you can see one seed bead, one pearl, one seed bead, one pearl, one seed bead, one pearl, one seed bead on the end. And now ignoring this thread, I'm exiting from this side here so if you have a look, I'll slide my beads down. You can see they're on this side of my work. So I need to loop around to create the square so that I'll enter on the opposite side here. So if I pick this up in my hand, because obviously if you're doing uh, the one needle method, it is nice and easy if you do it holding it in your hand. You can get a nice good tension that way. So let me just pick him up. There we go. So I'll just enter through that same thread there. This is the bead that I'm going into. This is where I'm working thread is coming from. So I want to loop around and into this same bead so that I'm coming out back where I started. So pull it all the way nice and tight. Ignore that thread that's going a bit loose. That's because I've got my two needle method. And now I'm over here. See that? So my thread's coming out here and I want to carry on around until I get back up to the top. So if I just flip my work over so that it's a little bit easier to work with, just here, get it nice and tight, and then we thread up the edges all the way to the very, very top through the seed beads, through that last little shell pearl there, the very last one, and then we can pull that nice and tight I'll make sure the other thread's tight too. And there you go. You can see it adds that next one on and we're in position to do our final little piece just there. So I'll get myself ready now to show you how to do this corner section. Uh, Audrey says, love this. I'm glad you like it, Audrey. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of making an enjoyable show for you guys. Um, here we go. So. If I, I'm coming out of here, let's just thread up this edge. Pull through here. And then I'll show you how to do this little corner section, shall I? Is that what we're, I'm sure that's what we're all about. That's what we're all after. So I'll add one more iteration. And then I'll show you how we can embellish the top as well. So there we go. Now to do this corner section. It's really easy actually. So again, I will we'll do what is something a bit more like doing my one needle method. But again, I want to end up coming out of one edge. So because I want to be coming out of this side here, if you think about it, I'm going to have four beads. One, two, three, four. This is the base one. The one down, one here, one up the top there, and one over here. And then I'm going to continue working in this direction. That's going to give me a nice corner. So essentially, I want to be making sure that I'm exiting from an edge bead. So let's pick up 
a seed bead and a pearl, a seed bead and a pearl, and then a seed bead, and finally a pearl. That's going to go onto this one side. So see that? Seed bead, pearl, seed bead, pearl, ending with a pearl, because this is the bead we're going to cross through. Now on the other one, I just need to pick up one seed bead. How easy is that? There you go. There's one seed bead. And you can see my thread is exiting from this side. So to get that cross, uh, Wayne asks, do you use 15s to fill the corners? I'm actually using uh, Preciosa size 10s, which are the same size as the uh, a Japanese size 11. Uh, you can use 15s if you want to. You can use size 8 beads if you want to. It's up to you. So anyway, let's go round now and I'll cross through this bead here. It's going to come around over here. You'll see it's going to create our little square. So I'll just pass into that bead there and I'll pull them opposite directions. And you'll see as I pull, it creates that little square shape. But now I'm coming out the side. See how I'm coming out this edge now? So I can almost turn this sideways now. Pull that nice and tight. And I can continue. So now on the left side, let's go seed bead. Ooh, I need a few more pearls. Seed bead, pearl, seed bead, and a pearl to cross through. There it is. So that's going to be on this left side. Then on the opposite side, a seed bead, a pearl, and a seed bead there as well. And I will be crossing through this little bead just here. So there we go. That's our last little bead there. You can now pass through here. Pull this one tight. So this one's going to go this direction. This one's going to go in the opposite direction. And as I pull them, there you go. Look at that. See how we've got that square shape happening? The nice thing is, though, because it's relatively soft, relatively loose, it stays nice. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a useful little, little aspect is that by, uh, by, by using the two needle method, it doesn't need to be super duper tight because it will allow it to flex and move around comfortably so that it makes a really nice shape. So anyway, I'll do one last little square of these beads here. And then I'm going to show you the sort of a couple of steps that we'll do. So first things, uh, here we go. One seed bead. This is my very last little iteration I'm going to do so you can really see it taking shape in the direction that we're going. And then the last one, here we go. Seed bead, pearl, and a seed bead. Slide them down. Oops. Pull it nice and tight again first so it looks nice and neat. There we are. And now I'll cross through this top little bead here. So my thread is coming out of this side here of this one. So I'll pass into it to cross the two threads over just the pearl not the seed bead as well pull it all the way through and there you go get it nice and firm like that there see that and if at any point you want to tighten it you can just go through sort of lock everything that you've done in place just go round the square once more but let me show you a little something that makes it look really really nice so if I show you on this one just here, you can see, where are you? Well, maybe you can't quite see it the way I was hoping you would. Here it is. So if you have a look at this one here, you can sort of see, see how the central beads, they're kind of popping up a little bit compared to the edge ones. I'll show you why that is in just a second, but there's a really easy way to sort of emphasize that central bead before we start adding on these beads onto the top. 
And the way that we'll do that, which is part one of doing the embellishment process, is we can just weave down the edges and join all of these squares to each other. So it's nice and simple. I'll just, this sort of will help to tighten everything. In fact, if at this point you want to, you can tie these two threads together or just sort of weave them around to get them nice and firm to lock everything in place. So, but instead what I'll do is one at a time, I'm gonna work down the edge of my little piece here and I'll tie the occasional knot. So I'm gonna join these two seed beads to each other. So through this seed bead, all the way there, and now through that next little seed bead. You don't have to be too tight when you do this. You don't have to keep it too firm. Uh, you want it to be relatively loose, just so it stays still fairly soft and supple when we're working. And then with this one, we need to go through that little pearl. There we go. And we're gonna just go, I'll tie a knot now, just so you can sort of see what I mean. There we go. Let's get this bead out of the way while it's all getting caught. There we are. And then this is what's gonna stop that from happening now, is once you've got it nice and tight, I'll tie a knot under this thread here. Just a normal little knot there around that thread. Pull it all the way. And there, that's gonna help it all sort of stay together and I'll just continue around down the edge and it's gonna keep making that edge really, really nice and soft. Uh, there we go, sort of bring it all together and make it look really good. There you go, look at that, they go through quite a way. Look how many bees I just went through, super easy. And you can do another knot here and another knot there, here a knot, there a knot, everywhere a knot, knot. Um, and then once you've finished it, which I will continue in a second, I'll bring this one back here and I'll do a couple of knots here, get this one nice and tight, and then I'll tie a few knots, and then you'll see it stays really firm and it looks great. So just pull this all the way, nice and tight. There we go. Hold your threads, tie it all together when we're good and ready. Get it nice and close. Give this one a tug as well. Make sure everything's firm. It's important that everything is firm. And now just tie a little knot there. Again, it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit loose. This is just gonna help us in the process. Uh, am I in the right spot? No, I'm coming out one bead too early. Make sure you don't tie the knot in the wrong spot. Oops, where's that thread gone? Make sure it goes behind the pearl, that little seed bead. Give that a yank, there we go. And it'll help me to just get everything firm. So through this seed bead, through this seed bead, through here, pull it all the way through. Don't get your thread caught. Of course, we don't want a caught thread. There we are, pull that through. And everything will just firm up and look really good, ready to be embellished. Here we go, do a few more, through here, and just till we get to the very, very bottom, the very, very end. What do we think of this color, by the way? I'm gonna show you an enhanced version in just a minute. So there you go, you can see this is sort of all joined now, it looks all really nice, it gives it a sort of a nicer curve as well. Uh, and now uh, I'll just finish this one off so it's at the end as well. And then I'll show you this process of embellishing, shall we? Um, here we go. Wayne, uh, Wayne is talking about a funny story which uh, I'm sure Jermaine's gonna comment about. Uh, Wayne, he's talking about Christmas presents. He said, uh, I buried a box, I put it in a safe place so I wouldn't lose them with a Christmas present. Uh, so he wouldn't lose them. And he said he, it was very, very safe until three Christmases later. Well, something very similar happened uh, with mum and dad. Uh, Dad put a box, he hid it somewhere, and forgot about it. It was for Mum's birthday. He forgot about it until we were moving, uh, until they moved houses, 
uh, and then he found it again and went, oh, happy birthday for four years ago sort of thing. So you're not the only one that these things happen to, Wayne. Uh, but yeah, as Jermaine says, uh, sometimes Christmas lasts for months in our house with finding things here and there. Uh, but Wayne says there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, exactly. Um, so there you go. You can see this pretty much gets us to having that square shape looking really good now. That's looking really nice. I'm really happy with that. Uh, I'll just get it nicely in position. So you can see this is going to create that V shape at the bottom of our design. Now, let me show you. There's a couple of different ways that we can embellish the top. So if I do that, I'll just use this same thread, which is why I used a nice long thread so that I can do everything. Uh, essentially, I want to be coming at the end of this little piece just here. So I'll show you a few different styles of embellishment just on the one piece, but then I'm going to go in and I'll show you it on another piece, which I've made a bit earlier, where I've mixed some of the colors. So I'll show you it in just a second. Here we go. So I'll show you the couple of different styles of embellishment. Here we go. See, look, this is another one which I've done where I've mixed the colors. See that there? So I've used little boxes of the dark color and intermittently mixed them with this other lighter color of pearl in there just to give it something a bit different make it a little more interesting a little bit different but i'm going to come back to this one so i'll show you the different ways that we can embellish there's a couple you can get creative you can play around uh, but then i'm going to come back to this one and show you my finished final idea that i think i hope that you will like very very much so anyway exiting from this point here you could uh, add a clasp, of course, if you want to, to turn you around. Uh, essentially what you would do, uh, which, why not? I may as well. Uh, you can just pick up one, two, three, four, five little seed beads. And then on the other one, I'll pick up three seed beads. One, two, three. This won't take me more than a mere moment. And then you can go up here into this, these end two, these last two that were on that previous section. Come on now, on you get. There we are. And then as I pull them tight, it's going to create like a nice little V type shape just here. Maybe I should have used a couple of extra beads, doesn't matter. Next time, eh? So there, there you go. There's that nice sort of top finish, like so. And now at this point, I'll pick up, we can we can sort of decorate a little, we can make a beaded ball. So I'll pick up one pearl and one seed bead, and I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to create like a little lug on the top. So I'll just pop that one on there, thread back down here, and through those two beads, like so. And then I'll do the same with the other one. So this one's gonna go up through here, through that little seed bead, which I'm using, whoops, as a lug piece on the top. Oops, pulled my needle straight off. Oh, well, just put it back on then. And there we go. And now I'll take this one back down into that little bead, just straight away, back slooping around and through these two beads. And then I can pull these two threads together. And that's going to just pull everything nice and tight. And that's going to give me a clasp on the end. If you want to, of course, what looks super nice is if you go around the bead multiple times. So if you were coming out the bottom here, you can pick up like six or seven beads and go back into the top hole and down. Pick up six beads and go back into the bot, down, back to the bottom. Six beads, loop around, back down to the bottom. Six beads, and you just keep going until eventually it creates a little beaded ball 
which this one only has very few little loops, like that. So see that? You could do this as well. That's a nice, fun little idea. And at the opposite end, you can add just a loop on the end, something like that. Uh, but there you go, see? That's a nice way, or you can just have it plain if you prefer. But hey, let's move on. Let's continue now. Uh, we've just seen uh, Doris is here. She's just joined us. She only just managed to get rid of her visitors. Come on, Doris, you should have told them. Matthew's going to be on. Bead Spider, he's going to be teaching me some jewellery. You're going to have to leave. Uh, next time, next time. Show them who's boss, Doris. Anyway, uh, so let's continue, and now I'll show you the, 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 the different ways that we can embellish our top section. There's two, there's a couple of different ways. One is from our elegance kit, which is the elegance bracelet and necklace. So I'll make sure I'm coming out of this end bead as we were just before. And then the other one is uh, from our Cinderella kit, which again, both of them are there on the website and available. Um, don't forget as well, of course, that the, the crystal sale ends on Sunday and the pearl sale ends next Sunday. But anyway, let's start embellishing, shall we? Hopefully I've got myself enough thread to show you both, but I'll show you them properly on the other one anyway. But so first things first, I'll show you how we can create this nice little crisscross top bit. So again, you can use whatever size crystal you want in the center here, but it's up to you what you use. I'm using one that's ever so slightly larger than this. I'm going to use a three by four because that's what we use in our Cinderella design, which looks a little something like this. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do both. I'll show you both where you can also create these little loops around the outside as well. It's up to you. It's up to you how you want to do it. So anyway, let's turn this around. There we go. And I'll show you how we do this little crisscross. It's, it's way easier when you've got two needles. Essentially, I'll show you one, two, three. You can do two, you can do three, you can do whatever. Because my bead is a little bit larger this time, I'll just do three. Where are my, where are my crystals? Here they are. So like I said, I'm using these sort of creamy colored three by fours because I think they look very nice. And then I'll embellish the other one a bit more properly so you can really see. Do you know what? Do you know what? Maybe I'll just use the other one because I think the other one, it's going to look really nice if we do it that way. And again, if I use the two needle method, let's just, let's just jump to the good stuff, shall we? Why watch it twice when you can just watch it once the good way? So this is uh, my little piece here and I'm going to embellish this one. But there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. So for example, which, ah, oh, maybe I should have showed you that on the other one. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Mm, yes, I will. Real quick, real quick, I'm going to show you one which I think you'll like. I think you'll like. This is like a, a half embellishment. So it looks really, really cool. Jermaine uh, came up with this one just just earlier. She was sort of thinking, how can I make this embellishment look great? And, and then was like, oh, came up with a great idea. So anyway, I'll show you Jermaine's idea first, and then I'll get on to the good stuff, shall we? Shall we say? Uh, so yeah, I'm, we'll ignore this thread here, and what you can do essentially is go one, two, three, and a crystal, then one, two, three, so like this, it's three beads, a crystal, and three beads, and we'll just jump diagonally opposite. So see this one, we start with this bead down here camera doesn't know where to focus. Here we go. We start with this bead here. So I'm going to jump diagonally across and go through this bead up here, this next one. So up there, through that. And this is type one of our embellishment process. I'm going to show you three different ones, but this one is sort of halfway to be doing, uh, halfway a bit around one of the styles. Wait, let's get it around our clasp again. This very first one, there we go. Always the most fiddly, there we are. So there you go, you can see there's that first little embellishment. And we can just continue doing this one, two, three, a crystal, one, 
to three seed beads. There we go. So your crystal, three, and the crystal. And now bring that down. And actually, I'll just flick that over. Right? I'll put it into the other hand view for everyone. Here we go. So now, coming from this side over here, and I'm going to go across and diagonally through the other one. So this is for you left-handers. So through there, see that's where it's going to be sitting. And we go into this bead across. And we just keep going all the way along if you wanted to. Adding these little things like this. So one, two, three, a crystal, one, two, three diagonally across again, up into the next one. And just keep going. This looks really, really classy, actually, I think. And the colors look nice, don't they? This is just something that I put together, a little something I put together myself. Uh, here we go. One, two, three, a crystal. One, two, three. And once again, let's jump across diagonally, get my thread out the way, pick this one up so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. And look, see that little embellishment along the top? How nice does that look? Doesn't that look super nice? It's like a really effective way, and this is only half of what I was intending on doing. Jermaine did this earlier and she went, wow, that looks lovely, doesn't it? And I agreed, so I thought I would show you all. So anyway, I'll do it a couple more. One, two, three. Pick up a crystal. One, two, three. And now I'm coming out of this side of the bead just here. And so I'm going to go diagonally across and up into this one. Pull that. Whoops, got to make sure my thread stays on the top. There we go. Pull that all the way through. And there you go. What do we think? What do we think about that little embellishment on the top? Just that single line. Looks really good, doesn't it? And we can just keep going all the way down and around and along. Uh, and then and then if you wanted to, actually this could be this could be super cool. Three, one, one, two, three. Sorry I'm out of screen just here. I'm trying to keep it in, but I'm running out of thread. So we'll do the next one. So from this side here jump across and into the opposite end all the way in come on now round you go lost my thread oh well pull that and there you go there you have it see look comes together really nicely doesn't it looks fabulous it's a nice little design see that see now i'll show you what it would look like in the full version because usually you would do it with little crisscrosses which in this particular design what could look really cool is doing one this way and then the other one comes towards it that way and just have a cross in the center how cool would that look i think that could look really nice actually um, and then we could sort of just continue the pattern as it were up the other end so that it's coming to this central V point. That's the nice thing about having this V, is that it gives you a focal point to work towards. You could even dangle something from the bottom here if you wanted to. But let me show you, that's 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 number one. Let's jump over now and I'll show you number two and number three, but I'm gonna do them on this piece just here. And we're gonna do it with a new thread. So I've got two needles again. Uh, and I'm going to just thread into the end bead of one of them, it doesn't matter which end, just straight into that little end bead here. Where are you? There we go. Into that little end bead. And I'll show you now the other way. So get it nice and central on the thread. Get it nicely in the middle. There we are. You can add your clasp if you wanted to, but essentially, let's start embellishing. So, let's pop this on this side, this on the other. This definitely works much quicker if you've got two needles, which you'll soon see why. So if I start here, we can again do something very similar, where we go one, 
two, three, and a crystal. One, two, three beads. See that there? And then I'm going to just go from this diagonally across and into this one here. You might want to tie your thread at this point just so it sort of stays locked in place, but you don't have to um, because when we start doing the, these crosses, it'll sort of knock it all in place. So there's that first one. But now what we can do with our other needle, we just pick up one, two, three seed beads, and we're going to go through this little bead. So you can choose whether or not you go this way or that way. It doesn't make too much of a difference at this point. Just sort of try and do it the same every way, uh, every time. So one will give you a sort of longer looking finish and one will give you a sort of squarer looking finish. So if I go through there and pull that tight and then pick up three more seed beads, one, two, three seed beads, and through this same little central bead, I'm going to go through there. So crossing my threads again, just like that, pull you through. And now you'll see what was a zigzag is going to become a cute little box, which looks really nice. See, there it is. You've got that little cross shape. Do you know what? I'll show you the difference. See, this is if you do the crystal in this direction, but you could also do it the other direction, which maybe I will. Maybe I'll go back. I'm going to undo one thread and we'll see how different it looks because I think it could look even nicer in the other direction. Let's check it out, shall we? It's easy to undo if you make a mistake. You can just take the needle off the, the last most thread and all I've got to do is just get it gradually coming back through here. There we go. Come on through, Mr. Friend, Mr. Thread Friend. All the way. There we go. And now, you know how before I went in from the edge? Let's go in from the bottom and wait till you see what happens. It looks good, but I think it will look even better in that direction. So grab my needle, thread him back on, pick up my three beads. I've just dropped them on the, on the mat here. There they are, one. Come on now. One, two, and three. I tell you, they're certainly easier to pick up on my bead mat than on this hard surface. There we go. And now, whoops, not yet. Don't need them yet. Go through there. I've got my three beads. And now we'll go up through the bottom. And you'll see this creates a difference. It gives you a different shape altogether. So pull that through. There you go. And now one, two, three. And now I'll do my crossover. So I guess this is sort of like two different ones in one go. It's exactly the same process, but whether or not you go through the crystal will determine which direction it sits and it will give you a different shape. See, there you go. See, now it sits different. So the crystal is now this direction instead of that direction. It's up to you which way you prefer, but I think I prefer it that way. What do we think? So now, it gives it that really nice cross shape. You could do it with um, with two beads instead if you prefer. Uh, if you prefer it a little bit looser like I have on this one, you can do it that way. Uh, now, I'll do my next one, shall I? So the different now, I'm going to do a slightly different version of this next piece. So I'm going to use more crystals this time rather than uh, the seed bead. So I'm going to pick up one seed bead, one crystal, one seed bead, one crystal, and one seed bead. See that? So this is going to give me my other version. And because I'm exiting this one, I'm going to jump across up here and through this bead in the opposite way. So put them approximately in position and go through that bead in the other way so that when I pull it nice and tight there we go there it is just there sitting now and it's extra sparkly crystal so now I'll just pop this one aside and now I'll go a seed bead and a crystal 
and we're going to pass through this central little seed bead. So it's kind of exactly the same. So if I zoom in a teeny touch, just get it nicely in position. I've got my crystal and my seed bead. So seed bead first, then the crystal. Get this thread nice and straight. And we're going to go through this seed bead here. Through there. Pull it tight. And that's going to start this crystal process. It's going to be a little bit loose until we tighten it. So wait till we get our crossover. Pick up a crystal and a seed bead. And now through this same little base section pearl, through this bead here, but in the opposite direction. So the opposite corner to where we were before, through there, pull it tight all the way. We're gonna pull all the way through. There you go. And now you'll see, once I get it nice and firm, ta-da! It sits like this. So now you can see I've got one, then four. And now I'll do my cross again. So let's go one and two. Do you know what? I'm going to try it with just two seed beads this time and see if it looks better than this one where I've used three, just to see. Because it's all about experimenting, this is. It's all about trying things, playing with them, see what looks better. Because this bead being a little bit bigger, maybe I don't need that third centimetre. Here we go. Ouch, just stabbed myself right in the finger. So there we go, this one's gonna sit here. Now we'll go here. Do you know what though? I've got another thing that I'm gonna do after this and then to take it to the next level even. Whoops, pull that through. Yeah, maybe that sits a bit better, doesn't it? Let's find out. Let's take our other one. So let's go one, two. We'll go through this crystal. Doesn't matter which one you go through, I guess. Let's go through this side like I did before so that they're aligned the same direction. It's up to you which direction you prefer. Pull that through there. Pick up two seed beads, one, two. And now we're gonna cross through that little base pearl with our second thread. Try not to go through the seed beads, just the pearl. You'll find out something that we can do with these seed beads in just a minute. Stick around, don't run away. Oops, try not to let that thread get caught around your V or anything. Get it out of the way, there we go. And then we just pull that nice and tight, both sides. And then ta-da, there we go, there's that one. See, I don't know, what do we think looks better? the With three beads or with two beads? I can't tell. I mean, it's entirely up to you which one you prefer, isn't it? So it's sort of here nor there, really. It's a little bit tighter with two, but maybe the three looks a bit better. I can't quite tell. So anyway, let's do another one with our four. So I'll grab out a few more crystals. I'm gonna have to get them off my strand. Just undo ya. And then I'm going to show you one last way that we can really take our design to the next level. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to try one with the other direction in a second. But we'll go a seed bead. One crystal. We're playing, you see. We're, we're designing. We're, we're seeing what we come up with. This is the good thing about sort of experimenting and smushing multiple kits together. Is that... I don't even know what's going to happen. We're just playing. Uh, I like the single crystal and two seed beads. I think using two crystals hides the pearls, says Wayne. There we go. So that's there. So Wayne prefers the crisscross. He doesn't like the uh, the little square at the top so much. But I'm going to I'm going to do both. Why not just do both? So through here. There we go. Pull that one through. Grab our second needle. Just one seed bead and one crystal. I mean, you could try other things. You could try doing them, you know, seed beads, whatever. Go through here.
and a crystal, followed by a seed bead, and crisscross here. There we are. Pull this one tight. Come on now, all the way tight. That's what we want. There. Nope. What are you doing? Why is this one caught? Oh, it's under the... No. What have I done? I don't know. Can't tell. Oh no, I broke my thread. I was pulling too hard. I was thinking it looked caught. Oops. I just broke my thread. That's alright. We can just fix that. Well, maybe I'll just have to continue on with one needle then. So you can do this same embellishing process with just one needle as well. I'll have to go round and tie this off, won't I? Oops. Clearly I pulled my thread too hard. One seed bead and one crystal. Oopsie, there we go. I thought I'd pulled it a bit too... It wasn't caught right. Oh well. Through here. Ready? You'll see, we can fix this. This isn't going to be a problem. Get you over there. Let's zoom out a little. Are we a little close? Then we use crystal. And it goes into this seed bead here. And we'll go through there. And then I'm going to try and tie these together in the hopes that I don't lose any more beads. Tie it to here. There you go. Let's just go back up into this just to be sure that it's secured from that little thread that broke through here tie a little knot there in fact I could probably tie a knot to both of them just to make sure I've covered the correct one pull that there and then, do you know, this is actually going to lead me in to doing my other form of embellishment, which I thought looked nice, in just a second as well. Everything happens for a reason, doesn't it? There we go. Back up there. Back in here. Look at that. We didn't even lose a single bead. I'll take that as a win. My hand is becoming rather sore. Oh well, we've almost finished. There's not too much longer left, but I should show you a little something, last little thing that we've got here. As another form of improving our embellishment. Yes, Wayne says if you use one needle, you can go all the way up and then all the way back down again. Exactly. Correct. Exactly correct there, Wayne. Through here. And then into here. Well, I guess now you get to see what it looks like when I do it with the one needle method. But yeah, this is quite a fun little little thing here. Through that bead there. And I'll do a cross now on my little end bit. You can do these crosses. You can do all of this with just the one thread, which is good. So I'll go one, two. Did we like it with two? Yeah, I think I like it better with two. Two seed beads, one crystal, and two seed beads just there. And let's go into this one here. And now let's pick up two seed beads. One, two. 
let's go into this bead here and get it nice and firm one two back into this one and now once we're getting ourselves to here we can just go around the corner by passing through this little bead here which joins these two pearls with one seed bead and into here and now I can add my next little section which in case you want to see see look there's the first one this is coming together quite nicely <laughs> Nancy says you are the man but with capital M A and N like my mug it's almost the same except with a T rather than an N uh, yeah so let's have a little look uh, Sharon says I'm trying to build a kit so Sharon there's a link in the description if you have a look uh, you're on Facebook just above there should be a thing and it will say get your own or make your own something like that and a little hands pointing down emoji and underneath there'll be a link which I think is called bit.ly slash v necklace if you click on that it will take you to where you can find the three different kits so yeah let me show you a little something now that um, can look really really effective I'll do one more actually I'm gonna weave around and I'll do it on this outer edge here because I think this could look really cool this is another experiment that I'm sort of taking initiative from our Cinderella which this is Cinderella and if she can do it she can do it then so can I so see how we've got this sort of design around the outside edge I'm gonna use this same concept uh, to to create something of my own suggestion we'll see how this looks I reckon seven beads probably is gonna fit maybe three four five six seven we can see what we think will look nice that looks about like it'll go right from here and then we can just join seed bead to seed bead so through there look at that that looks good that's a good size I think let's pick up seven more one two three four five six seven and then we'll go into the next seed bead I guess if you did an even number you could even go back and pico these maybe I should have done eight. Oh well too late now or six and pico them and I can do this whole base section oops I went through too many beads there just the seed beads I want to go through pick up seven more one two three four five six seven and into the next seed bead and the one after oh yeah the competition I won't forget so once I finish these little bits I'll just show you this last little bit and then I'm gonna get on to the competition because we're almost finished one two three four five six seven and then into the seed beads the next little pair of seed beads through there what do we think about this little addition of adding this little section along the outside edge would make like a nice sort of fringe along the bottom I don't know if it needs it on the top I don't know we could try it six seven or maybe every second bead could have it instead of every single one I don't know it's entirely up to you you can experiment you can play with it see what works for you what you think looks best it's all about designing and playing and just trying things out see there we go what do we think about that extra little thing at the bottom there I think that looks kind of nice I'll do the last bead why not while I'm here and then and then let's get on to our competition one two three four five six seven 
which, do you know what? Actually, let's have a look how it could have looked with a Pico. So I'll do just six on this one, and then I'm going to weave back. Six is a little small, so that's what six looks like. But what you could do, which would look really cool, is you can go up and around and sort of bring ourselves back down. This will join my crystals together quite nicely for the end. I'm ready. If you used an even number of beads, you could even come back to here and go through this one, pull it here. That's going to lock me back around. Go through the first three. Ready? This is, this is you know, getting experimental again. Through here, and now down into the next three. And then that's going to give us a little bead pico. Is it going to look all right? Gives it, see how it's got now that little beaded point to it? Just a teeny weeny little beaded tip. It's a nice little idea. Uh, someone said a micro crystal. Yeah, Wayne, what a great idea. You could use a pico uh, using a micro crystal just there. Fantastic idea. I wish I'd thought of it. I would have done that myself. Oh well, doesn't matter. But yeah, that little pico I think makes it just that little bit different. See, look, see how one is round and then the other one slightly droppier. Looks good, doesn't it? Or you could even you could even do like a tiny little right angle weave. Let's try it. I've got seven on this one, so I can do it. So I'll go into. Let's see what this looks like. We're just experimenting now. We've gone. We've gone off. Oh, whoops. Uh, speaking of gone off, we need to get rid of Wayne there. There we go. Um, we've gone off pissed. We're, we're skiing freestyle now. Freestyle beading. So there's three. Because I did seven beads on this one, let's try it. Let's go through this middle one here. What do we think? That's one, two, three. Here's that central one, four. And why not try it? We'll go one, two, three. Make a little right angle weave. This will give you a bigger drop. There you go. That looks good. That's cool. That's fun. I like it. Don't know. Is it better? What do we think? You could have done it almost like every second one. So each one of the square boxes has... Ah, oh, yeah. How nice does that look? That looks really cool. That looks really good, actually. I like that. See? Play. Experiment. Try things. You might, you might come up with something good. This has worked nicely. And then... We'll leave this one as a, as a round one. Or oh, actually, I've got seven beads. Why not just turn that seventh one into a pico? One, two, three. I can turn it into a pico already. I've got an odd number. Let's just skip it. Skip that middle one. And it will turn that into a pico, hopefully. So don't thread through the seventh. So I've gone through one, two, three. We're not going to go through the middle one. I'm going to skip it so it will pop up like a pico. And go one, two, three. Do you know what? This is potentially going to either work very nicely or very poorly. We're about to find out. There you go. That created a Pico. There you go. And now we'll do my next one. Let's go around and do a little right angle weave on this. Through there. This has come together nicely. See, look at that. Because I added that seventh bead, you can just skip it when you do your Pico. And there you go. Now it's a Pico. It's better if you do it when you're adding them in at the end. It's definitely easier, but if you were foolish like me, are we in the right spot? One, two, three, four, one. Where's the center? One, two, three, four. Oh, maybe I added one too many beads on this one. That's a shame. Or did I? No, maybe I have. Bummer. Oh, well. That's why this one's a bit loose. I've added eight beads on this one. Oopsies. Oh well. Maybe we'll make a little thing. There's loads of different things. I'll pick up a bead and we'll add a pico in there anyway then. Since we've got an even number. Why not? What do we think, everyone? And now, I don't know. Just experiment, play with it. Alter it in many ways. There's so many ways. Yes, I like that with the Pico, says Vicky. So there it is. There's my little 
pointy picos, and there's the little right angle weave pico. What do we think? What do we like better, the pointy pico or the right angle weave pico? I should have done a right angle weave on this one. Still can, why not? I've got a little pointy out pico. Can do it easily. But yeah, which one do we like better? Plus, I really like the colors. I think the colors have come out nice. This one is our rose gold seed bead. I've used the sort of creamy colored crystal, which is this one here. There it is. You can see the AB surface on it too, which is nice. Oh no, I'm losing beads everywhere. Uh, I don't have too many left. Um, I've got my sort of blushy colored six mil um, mother of pearl beads. I've got these ones, the mother of pearl. And then I've also got the the slightly pinkier ones as well. So that's everything I've used there, those four different beads. But that's come out quite nice, hasn't it? That looks good. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. So anyway, uh, on that positive note, let's get into our competition, shall we? So um, as per we, as we promised, here we go. Uh, let's have a little look. This is the competition that we had. Uh, we do our we do our little competitions every month. So there'll be a new one next Monday. So I guess it's like a five week cycle. A month of um, a month of of allowing people to come up with their designs, and then a week for us to decide, and then we let everyone know. So anyway, I've got everybody's entries. I've literally got everyone who entered. I think there's 27 of you. And then we've got some prize winners at the end as well. So let's take a look at the first little picture. So first one there, uh, we had Heather. She sent in a lovely little design there. Uh, that one was her inspiration. I don't have the text that people commented in on these ones. I'd have to go and find it, I suppose. But unfortunately, I don't have it. Um, to hand just here. We have some really nice ones though. Susan Rogers did us a lovely angel. I really like that one. Lots and lots of tassely bottom bits and those wings are super cool. So thank you to Susan for sending us that one. Uh, Pam, this one was really interesting. This one was a, a very, very close to, to making our, our, um, our short list of winners. So if you've entered, make sure you stick around because you might've won. Uh, and if you haven't, you can see all the things that people entered to our into our competition. Um, so yeah, that one was a nice one there from Pam. Well done to Pam, thank you. Uh, Isabella, she did a really nice one here as well. I think those are cat's eye beads that she's got there, and it looks like they're within a bead net. So again, a lovely little design, and I like that clasp. That one was her um, idea for the... Uh, for the Midsummer Night's Dream, Shakespeare themed. Uh, this one here is from Hawk, Hawk B. Lessard. Uh, another nice one. Uh, thank you for sending yours in. I like that one. It's sort of reminiscent of like a spider web, maybe, or something that you would find in an enchanted forest. Uh, this one here, Teresa Smith, she's done ear cuffs, which they're really cool. So if you don't know what they look like when they're on, uh, essentially it's like a an advanced form of uh, like an earring, but it clips onto your whole ear. So it covers your whole ear. So I like that one. Thanks, Teresa. I really like that one. Nice uh, design. And I like that blue color as well that you've used. Uh, Louise is here. She sent us, it looks like it is um, square stitch, or maybe it's herringbone even, square stitch, I reckon. Uh, and then on top of that, she's uh, embellished it with a few different uh, different beads there. So some twin beads, it looks like, or super duos maybe. Um, and then uh, some little leaves and buttons and things. And that's a really cool cuff that she's made. I like that one. That one was hers. So thank you to Louise as well. We've got Alison here. Uh, hers, it's got some gemstone chips, it looks like. Uh, again, another very, very nice design. And that button is fantastic. Uh, I really like that one. Uh, Chris, this one, absolutely beautiful workmanship here. So she's used a whole load of different sparkly rainbow looking sort of crystals in there. And then they're all enc encased within uh, like a netting of seed beads and things. So again, another really, really nice design. Well done there to Chris. Thank you for sending that one in. 
Um, let's see. Uh, Tracy, who was here watching earlier. Hopefully you're still here, Tracy. Thank you for entering the competition. Uh, this one here is a headband. Uh, beautiful little headband that she's made there. Again, uh, I like that it's that you just randomly have at home a uh, like a Greek statue looking uh, bust head there that you could put your headrest onto. Looks fabulous. Uh, again, thank you for sending that one in. Uh, Susan here got really creative uh, with like nappy pins, I believe, looks like, or maybe they're safety pins. Uh, and she's put onto them some fluorite gemstone chips and then turned that into a necklace. So it makes this big chunky looking thing and it looks fabulous. I really, really like that one. Very, very ingenuity um, to the max there on the creative use of the pins. I really liked that one. Uh, she's also sent us this one here, which is lovely as well, which it's got some of those, they look like kind of maybe glass pearl or pearly type beads at the bottom. Maybe they're silver, I can't tell. And then she's got some of those beautiful pink um, glass beads on the inner section and then a third layer, which is just the chain at the very, very top there. So a triple layered necklace. Again, thank you to Susan for sending those ones in. Both were lovely. Uh, Jackie here has sent one where she's made like a almost like a three-dimensional netting uh, of that one, which again, that looks absolutely lovely. Uh, I really, really like that one as well. Uh, and it goes nicely with that little fairy in the center. And I assume that's a bracelet there. That must be a big fairy. I can't tell. Uh, but very, very fun design as there. Thank you to Jackie. Uh, Deborah. This one was really fun. Jermaine really, really liked this one where it's got the dragonflies. They're little beaded dragonflies there. Looks like they've got herringbone or, or maybe ladder stitch for the body. Uh, and then they've got some little beaded wings on either side. And she's sort of fuse them all together into a necklace, which looks really, really cool. So uh, a great one there from Deborah. Um, perfectly fits that Midsummer Night's Dream theme. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, another really nice one. So thank you there to Deborah. Uh, Lorraine. This one was one of the first ones entered. She posted this into our Facebook group. If you, if you didn't know, all of these have been in our Facebook group. Uh, because we run our competitions in the Facebook group, which is lots of fun. I think there's about 2,200 people. Uh, so we're already up 200 people more from last week. Uh, but yeah, that one there looks fantastic. She's uh, wire wrapped around like a big metal central piece and then made a tree of life with amethyst. So really, really cool. I like that one a lot. So well done there to Lorraine. Uh, thank you for sending that one in. Um, we've also got this one here, which I thought was beautiful workmanship. Raylene has made an owl, a wire owl with this beautiful copper colored, sort of almost rosy gold copper colored wire. Uh, and she's got a gorgeous, looks like a gemstone cabochon, maybe pendant in the center there. And then it's got these lovely black eyes as well. And she's attached that to a chain. So that must have been, I tell you, I can, I can, I can definitely appreciate the workmanship when it comes to the wire wrapping because it is definitely not my forte. Now this one here, Kristen uh, Konzak. Again, she's uh, she's become a regular from watching, which is lovely to see. Uh, well done, another lovely design. Uh, this one here, it's all this, it almost reminds me of bunting. So, and then they've got like the flowers in the center. Really, really cool. Uh, again, you can check that one out. Um, on all of these are on our, our Facebook group uh, group, which there's a link to that in the description. If you haven't seen it, it says, don't let the fun end when the stream ends. Click here to visit our Facebook group. If you've got Facebook, go on there, join the group. There's going to be another competition on Monday, uh, so you can enter into that one. We're going to think of a new theme between now and then. So lovely one there. Uh, Nilsa here as well. This one, they're just really lovely, beautiful glass beads that she's put together into a, uh, a really long necklace. She's in fact sent us two. There's the green version and there's a really lovely purple version there. So beautiful, beautiful work there from Nilsa. Thank you very, very much for sending those ones in. Uh, they look fantastic, beautiful. Now, if you are wondering if you've sent something in and you're wondering, hey, what happened to mine? I haven't seen mine yet. Well, good news. Keep watching. This is where we get to the part where it's the people who've won the prizes. So we've got three levels of prize. 
uh, we've got one big main prize winner, uh, which is a £25 voucher. We've got a second prize, which we had two second prize winners, where they're getting a £15 voucher to use on our website to buy anything you like, whatever you want, which if you're in the US, your £15 voucher will actually be in dollars. You don't have to use it in pounds. It can be in dollars, which is probably somewhere in the region of about 20 22 dollars if you're in the US. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's one grand prize winner, two of our 15 pound vouchers, and four of our 10 pound vouchers. So let's get back into it and we'll see who those ones are. So these ones are our bronze medalists, shall we say, seeing as we've got our Olympic theme coming. The first one is Alice McCarthy. This one had a lot of likes on Facebook. She put a, uh, there was a really lovely long description about how she chose the bead and how she thought it matched the theme. Uh, so I thought that was a really nice design here. The beads are beautiful, the workmanship is beautiful, the colour is perfect for that um, for the theme, uh, but a really, really lovely design. So great job there from Alice. You are going to get the first of our £10 vouchers, uh, so that's great. Oh, by the way, I, I'll do this just because uh, Andrew put this in, so I decided why not. Uh, hopefully it will work, I have no idea. I don't know if you can hear that, but... There's meant to be some applause and clapping here. I don't know if you could hear it, but I hope so. Anyway, who knows if it worked or not. But I decided I would try and use one of his special effects. He put some audio effects in. Don't know if it worked. Anyway, uh, this one here, Stacey Bailiff. Again, this one I thought was really creative, really, really cool. Uh, if I remember correctly, Stacey actually said that she used um, a couple of our own tutorials actually to make this. So she watched our tutorial with the beaded dress in the center there. She had some really cool, um, I think she said that they were resin wings and then she used our Nepal stitch chain tutorial to make the actual chain that goes around the head. So I thought that was really, really creative, super, super cool. Um, another one there, uh, so Stacy Bailiff, uh, £10 voucher for you because, again, a really, really creative design, that one. I really like that one. Um, this one here, Jan, as well, you're getting a £10 voucher. I know Jan is here. She even uh, commented just a minute ago saying these are all lovely. Um, so congratulations to Jan. Jan actually designed this uh, this wrap herself. So you can see there's Puck the Donkey, there's a fairy there. Um, and that is her, her candle wrap that she's made. Really, really cool um, design there by Jan. She made it herself and then designed it and put it all together herself. And it looks fabulous. And we thought, well done. You've made a whole pattern, like a literal peyote pattern that fits the Midsummer Night's Dream. So we had to give that one a prize. So well done there to Jan. That's another one of our £10 vouchers just there. So congratulations, beautiful work as well. Uh, and then last one, this one I thought was really, really well thought out. It was so close to making it into our top three, but uh, it's the last of our 10 pound winners. So you can see again, uh, Susan here has made a tree of life in the center there. But what was really, really cool, because obviously this is Midsummer Night's Dream and the nod to Shakespeare, so our Tudor Bangle kit. We have a kit called the Tudor Bangle, and she's used little segments, see those little purpley segments up the edge, little pieces of Tudor Bangle as a nod to Shakespeare um, in uh, as part of the design. So the whole thing has been thought about and put together and looks really, really lovely. Again, beautifully done, um, and and my the thing that I like best about it is how much thought went into it. So well done there to Susan. Uh, again, ten pound voucher is coming to you. By the way, contact us, uh, or we'll we'll put it in the Facebook group. We'll send you a comment in the Facebook group. It will come from us. Uh, it'll be in our Facebook group. Um, that's how we'll contact you. Uh, so thank you for for entering. So now we're getting to our top three. So these two, uh, the two next ones, they're getting £15 vouchers. And then we've got our big major prize winner at the very, very end. So 
Sandra Arnold. Jermaine, this one was her absolute favorite. She really, really liked it. So she's used all of these beautiful green pearls and leaves. There's a little blue flower in there, if you can spot it down the bottom. Um, and then the white was meant to be sort of like snow, she said. So another really, really lovely design there as well. Um, it's made with wire, it's on like a nice base piece and then you sort of wrap it around onto your neck, but it's almost like wearing a laurel wreath. So I thought it was really cool, really liked it. Great job there from Sandra Arnold. You're getting one of our 15 pound vouchers. We really, really liked this one. So congratulations to Sandra. Uh, we've got one other of our 15 pound vouchers, which is Amy Schneider. She got this one in nice and early, so it had lots and lots of likes over on Facebook uh, in the group. Uh, and again, she's put it together. Mm, it's like a, a really lovely beaded netting, as it were. It's got the leaves in there again because it's got that, that uh, Midsummer Night Enchanted Forest vibe. Uh, and then it's got those little flowers at the top as well. So again, beautiful workmanship, sits lovely up on the neck. I really, really like that one. Uh, so another great design there as well, uh, nicely done. So thank you, Amy, for sending that one in. She was one of the very, very first. Congratulations, you're getting a 15 pound voucher. And uh, I'll pop this one on here because just onto my face, just before we announce the final winner, uh, I've got to tell you, I can see that they're watching, they're commenting away, so I reckon they might know that they could be the winner. But congratulations to Louisa Maria, uh, which is the winner of our competition with this piece just here. So uh, I think you guys will definitely like it. Congratulations to Louisa. Uh, she says, it's the rosehip flowers. The midsummer night is the magical flowers and the fairies dance in the moonlight for me. Um, I chose the rosehip flower for its beauty and magical healing properties. The necklace and earrings are made of Toho and Mayuki Rokayal seed beads. Uh, she's got some faceted crystals in there. There's glass, there's cabochons. She used peyote stitch. She used cubic right angle weave. She used herringbone stitch, a little bit of em embroidery in there as well. So a really beautifully made piece put together beautifully. The colors are fantastic. It's been thought about really, really nicely. So a beautiful piece all in all. So congratulations to Louisa. Uh, you have won our 25 pound voucher. So uh, congratulations to you. Uh, we really, really liked this piece. I uh, thought it was beautiful and a well-deserved winner. Don't you all think? What do we all think of the of our designs? What do we think of uh, the prize. Did you did you enter? Did you have fun? Comment in, you know, let us know. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, but yeah, let me know. What what was your your favorite design? Which one uh, you know, what you might have done. The good news is, like I said, we've got another competition coming on Monday. Uh, that's the plan. It's coming to the Facebook group on Monday. We're going to put up a little video of everybody's entries into the competition. Um, as well. We're going to put that on the Facebook group, but like I said, on Monday, we are going to have our um, our big final, uh, we're going to have our next competition beginning, so that'll probably work, last for about a month, five weeks or so. So, uh, do you know what? I'll give you a heads up. So, if you're watching now, uh, on Monday, our next competition is going to begin, uh, and the theme, so we've had Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, we've had Fire and Ice, that was our first competition, another really good competition. Uh, but next competition, we're going to go with African Queen. That's the theme. So again, the colours, you can use whatever you want. The s design, the style, the thought, the process, it's entirely up to you. It doesn't have to be jewellery, it doesn't have to be, um, I don't know, you can use whatever beads, as long as it's beaded, we don't care. It can be a it can be a handbag that you've embroidered or something. We don't mind. But the next one, which is coming on Monday, uh, is going to be African Queen, isn't it? That's apparently that's what we're doing. I think I, J Jermaine's just called out to me. I thought it was. I don't know. But yeah, that's that's the plan. Uh, but yeah, so coming on Monday, that's the next competition. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've 
all enjoyed today's tutorial. It's been a long one. We've got, uh, we got through it in eventually. I tell you, I was slowed down. I was hampered. I, uh, you know, that's my excuse. But hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you learned some good things. Uh, like I said, we used some basic stitches and then we sort of built on it from there. So uh, if you missed it, you can go back and watch the whole thing again, of course, uh, over on YouTube or Facebook or on the Bead Spider website, which actually, now that I think about it, uh, I should show you on the Bead Spider website real quick, uh, just because it's right here and it's not hard to show you. Here we go. Pop on over. So there you go. So on the Bead Spider website, www.beadspider.co.uk, that's our website. It will bring you to this page just here. If you want to get part of the Pearl sale, we've got up to 20% off. So uh, you can also get five pounds worth of patterns for free if you want to. Uh, you just subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, that comes up on there as well. But anyway, uh, if you want to get some of the pearls, there's pearls, there's glass pearls, there's freshwater pearls, and there's shell pearl. There's mother of pearl beads, but we also have the shell beads. So if you see underneath where it says 20% off crystals, where it says shell beads, um, they're in a slightly different spot. So click on the shell beads if you want to get some of those vibrant shell. So you know how I showed you at the beginning? Um, these are made from actual pieces of shell beads. There's four, six, there's all sorts of different shapes as well. Uh, they should all, yes, they're all on sale. See, look, uh, and you can get some of those beautiful pastel colored shell beads there as well. We've got the whole lot. You can get those um, there as well. See, look, all of those are there. Um, lots and lots of different shapes, the coins, the ovals, all sorts. You can get them all. Uh, just choose the ones that you like best. They come in lots of different shapes and sizes. The shell are there. We also have all of our normal pearls. So we've got glass pearls, freshwater pearls, and mother of pearl, which I've been using the mother of pearl beads here, which if I find them real quick, uh, the six mil, which are these ones just here, uh, I was using, let's see if I can find them for you. I believe I was using the light cranberry. These ones here. So you can see, uh, I think they're 20% off these ones. Um, yes, looks like it. But yeah, there's lots and lots of lovely colors there for you to choose between. Uh, get whatever you want. Plenty of different options, but lovely, lovely colors. I use the light cranberry and the pale lavender, I believe. I think that's the pale lavender, yep. Those are the two I use there. Uh, we do also have, of course, if you want to, much like, uh, oh yeah, you can pay in whatever currency you want. So US dollars, euros, or GB, uh, British pounds, whichever one you prefer, you can use those. Uh, but lastly, I'll just show you as well on, actually, I'll show you it on the table. Um, this one here, so this one I've done with the, the mother of pearl beads, but you can also use your freshwater uh, pearls, which these are a lovely grey freshwater pearl. You can see the shape being a little bit odd, doesn't make a problem at all. It still looks fantastic, but you've got a beautiful, beautiful luster. And then this, the seed beads on the top there just really make it. And of course I've got teeny weeny crystals. If you're going to get the kits, on the website. So um, I'll take you back to the website now so you can see that. Um, lastly, if you didn't see it, the crystals are also on sale. You can just click the button there and it will take you to where the crystal sale is, which ends on Sunday. But otherwise, if you want to have a go and make your own, uh, if you click where it says view all related products, it will take you to where you can see the elegance necklace kit, which this is the V-shaped necklace just here, which um, there's quite a few different colors. There's five different colors to choose from. Here's the elegance bracelet as well, which comes in, let's have a look. I think there's three colors of this one. Uh, this one here is, wait, you can just choose an option and then you can say, yeah, I'll have the classic or well, you just click on the drop down box. I don't know why it doesn't show you for some reason. There's the classic, which is, well, it's a classic, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's, uh, this is the rose. And I showed you one just a little earlier, which is the plum, which is that one just there. It looks beautiful as well. Uh, so you can get that one. And then we also have our Cinderella, which looks like uh, someone said they loved it. Love, love, loved the black one. But that's this one just here. So the Cinderella has the instructions on how to do all of this additional style of... Um, 
embellishing there as well. So, like I said, I've pretty much fused all three designs into the one. That's what this little piece here that I made. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had lots of fun. I know I definitely did. Uh, but I'm off to have a lovely weekend. I hope you've had lots of fun. Um, Karen is here. She says, I enjoyed the tutorial. I invited a few friends to join and sign up to your channel. Uh, please take care of your hand this week. I definitely will, because then I'll be able to come back and uh, demonstrate more things for you next Friday. Uh, because in case you didn't know, we demonstrate every Friday. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to our channel. The best way to know what's coming though is to sign up to our newsletter. Easily the best way because one, you'll get a five pound voucher to try out some of our beading patterns for free. Uh, and then also uh, when we're going to be doing live videos, when we're going to be doing sales, things like that, we'll just send you an email and you'll know all about it. So we don't send emails too often. Um, there'll be one a week for when there's a live video and maybe we do a sale as well. Uh, but yeah, um, thank you everybody for joining me. Jackie's still here. She says thank you. Um, Kay is got to run off. She's got to make breakfast. Uh, Purple Penny is here. Wayne says uh, see you all next week. Uh, from Wayne. Um, Nancy's still here. We've got Louisa who said, thank you very much for the tutorial. Well, congratulations, Louisa, on your uh, on your winning the competition as well. Um, but yeah, Tracy also says goodbye. Lots and lots of people, as always. Uh, and then this one's particularly nice, so I'm going to show it up, stroke my own ego. Uh, Dora says, brilliant tutorial, Matthew. Enjoyed all the different ways you embellished it. I look forward to making the necklace and bracelet. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Doris, and I hope many others of you enjoyed it as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, I am now off for the weekend. I'm going to have a lovely, chilled two days off, uh, and then I guess I will be back in the office on Monday and then here live again next Friday. So thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope you had lots of fun. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. Uh, but yeah, go out, bead, experiment, have fun, and I'll see you all next week. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.